On the show tonight, we've got one of America's biggest rappers. So, just for him, would you like to see me do some rapping? Yeah! <laughs> it's a pashmina. I hope he likes it. Let's start the show! show we have for you tonight. Not only a world famous rapper, not only a top comic, but also one of my favorite character comedians, the brilliant Catherine Tate is here, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I know. Catherine Tate. Catherine Tate out there. Oh, I love her. Oh, I love her. Oh, she's brilliant. Now, Catherine has won many awards for her brilliant sketch show. In fact, I think she's got a couple of Golden Globes in that picture. <laughs> Hey, now, we all loved her as uh, Lauren the schoolgirl. Uh, that's her with Tony Blair. Face <laughs> smug. Want to punch it? Uh, <laughs> uh, this is another of her characters, uh, Derek. Now, uh, <laughs> can you all remember Derek? He's one of those men you know is gay, but when it comes down to it, they insist they're straight. I've met a lot of them. <laughs> they're gay enough when you're buying them drinks. <laughs> Character. My favorite character is that foul mouthed old granny. Yeah. <laughs> also, the show in the comedy chair is my favorite comedian, Jimmy Carr, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Jimmy. Jimmy is quite the metrosexual man, but he's not gay. No, he's not. He still likes a night out with the lads. Here he is with David Walliams. <laughs> <laughs> it's not often you see someone looking gayer than David Walliams. <laughs> I don't expect David like that very much. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> the natural order is the story. Also on the show tonight, I am very excited. One of America's biggest selling musicians, rapper extraordinaire, 50 Cent is here! <laughs> I know. I know. There he is. Ooh. Ooh. I know. <laughs> I wonder what we'll talk about first. Guns or bitches? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I just can't decide. <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, 50, Cent, 50 Cent's debut album, Get Rich or Die Trying, became the fastest selling album in US history. Yeah. So he's sort of the rap equivalent to Susan Boyle. <laughs> <laughs> Big shout out going out to MC Subo. <laughs> in the house. In the council house. <laughs> With her pussy. <laughs> By which I do mean her cat pebbles. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is uh, 50 Cent's second album. Uh, oh, it's called uh, The Massacre. I think it's a collection of show tunes. <laughs> you know, chitty chitty bang bang, you're dead. <laughs> Spoonful of crack. <laughs> and of course, you've got to pop a cap in his ass. <laughs> now, he's also a bit of a fashion icon, ladies and gentlemen. Now, there he is. Look, he looks fantastic. Because, and the thing is, you've got to be very careful with those type of hats. They can make you look like a bit of a pillock. <laughs> and we're very excited, ladies and gentlemen, because in the audience tonight, we have the British 50 Cent. Yeah. It's MC Pound Shop. <laughs> Yeah. 
That's a couch and a half, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. This is already funny. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, they've got us all in the same room. <laughs> <laughs> no, but often, you know, settling when people come on, I try to find links between all my guests. Right. Tonight, not so much. Um, <laughs> I, I'm going to Twitter a photo, I think. OK. Oh, I better Twitter, because okay. it doesn't okay. happen every if day. I'm in with him, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want one? <laughs> yeah, can I get one, Graham? I'll get one. Here you go. Thanks, Graham. Sorry to impose and everything, Graham. Yeah. Right, here you go. I realise we've got other cameras here. <laughs> yeah, here you go. <laughs> well, that's all right. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! I, I feel like I've won a competition to be here. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is so cool you're here. Now, we've got lots to get through, so uh, let's crack on. Uh, new album. New album, Before I Self-Destruct. Before I Self-Destruct. You're going to be uh, performing the single. Uh, yeah, Baby By Me. Later in the show. <laughs> this is your last album with Interscope. My last album requirement, it's time to renegotiate now. Oh, I, oh so I see, so you're not definitely saying goodbye. So ching ching, good you're money. Just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> The only thing cheap about you is your name. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else. Because <laughs> the first album was Get Rich or Die Trying. Right. How did that work out? What it happened? Went, I got rich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it had a happy ending. Um, and uh, you take kind of your fans, it seems, very seriously and kind of... Is it, is it true the thing where you do read comments on YouTube? Yeah, but... I do. I, I wish I could punch some of them in the face. <laughs> <laughs> No, the easiest place to be tough. The easiest place to be tough is in front of the keyboard. You know, you can say whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In front of the keyboard, people just say the craziest stuff. But why I... don't you stop reading it? It must drive you mad. Well, yeah, but I, 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 I like to watch the clip and I like to imagine what people are thinking when they're looking at the material. But those people don't have a life. That's probably right, just right. Kanye That's sitting around going, "I'll have a go." <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah, you know what? I've said it before, I'll say it again. They're player haters, not celebrators. I like that. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> uh, now, listen. Uh, not to be serious, but you do, you do attract uh, a lot of criticism for things. You right. know, uh, being a, a poor role model and the lyrics of your songs. Yeah. And, and yet, your life, what you've done in your life, is extraordinary. It's really inspiring. Yeah, it's absolutely inspiring. And people... You can't allow people to, to tell you what direction to write in. Like, as an artist, you, you know, you choose things that you're inspired by that you can actually capture the best. So, for me, writing the harsh realities has been easier because I've actually experienced these things. I can draw from a real space when it comes time to create it. Because just to, to talk you through your, your journey very briefly, you, I mean, where you started in life right. was sort of as bad a start as it seems to me a kid could get in America. Absolutely. One of the worst, maybe. Yeah, because what your your dad was never around. No, I don't know my father. Uh, what what age was your mom when she got pregnant with you? My mom was fifteen. Okay. Yeah, and teenage and... pregnancy wasn't as common then as yeah. now. So. And then, what age were you when she died? I was eight. She was twenty-three. Wow. And uh, so, sorry, I don't mean to be, it might sound brutal that I'm just going through these facts, yeah. but I know you have talked about this yeah, a, yeah, yeah. a lot, and it, I think it's extraordinary. So, she was murdered. Right. And then you lived with your grandparents at that point? Yeah, I had to go stay with my grandparents. My mom was one of nine. So I was like the, the tenth child. Okay. Coming into the house. And your mom was a drug dealer. Yeah. And then at what age did you become a drug dealer? I started hustling around 12. It's, it's an easy influence for you when only people you see who have nice things are people from my mom's life. At that point, I wasn't Curtis Jackson or 50 Cent. I was Sabrina's little boy. So when I ran into people who had the same lifestyle and made the same choices my mom made, they appeared to have everything, so it was easier to, for me to go in that direction. And then, obviously, you know, you're making money doing that. Yeah. So it must be quite hard to break that cycle, to kind of go, I'm going to stop that and I'm going to focus on a talent that I have, on music. How, how did yeah. you do that? My son, actually, is my motivation. You know, so I, I motivated my mom to go in the wrong direction and he inspired me to go into a new direction, which was writing music. And uh, would you, I do think it's worthy of a round of applause. <laughs> you know, and to, to fast forward, you then, you, you worked on your music, you just got your big break, you'd done a deal uh, with Columbia. Right. The, the record label, not the country. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, <laughs> and then... 
<laughs> and then, but no, but then, then, stop laughing, because then an awful thing happens. Then yeah. you're involved in this horrific shooting. Yeah, I was shot. How many times? Nine times. And it, in the one shooting? Yeah, one shooting. Yeah. And so all nine bullets hit you? Yeah. Now, I... One in my face. But, and in terms of you being alive, is that lucky? Were they warning you, or were they a bit useless? <laughs> well, I think, uh... <laughs> you know, some people would call luck a blessing, you know, and say that it is their higher power allowing them to survive those type of situations because you, there's no explanation for it. So you, sh you should have died, is what you're saying? I shouldn't have died. I, you can't get me to say I no, shouldn't No, 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 died. no, no. <laughs> medically, medically. <laughs> you should have died. <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> I'm sorry. That didn't seem very friendly. Dude, I just think if, it's, if it was a higher power, then why didn't he stop the man shooting you nine times? Book of the fool, he should have got there sooner. Well, you gotta just, <laughs> that's a lesson, right? You know, like, and every time you say a prayer and God don't answer, it's because he told your ass no. <laughs> There's something for that, isn't it? <laughs> very wise. <laughs> very, very, you are a very wise man, a very clever man. Do you seriously drive in an armor-plated car? Yeah, I have cars. It, but is that, is that... Are you seriously still under threat? Well, not the same threat level I had at that point, but um, I'm aware of it. You know, I have examples. I have uh, Biggie died in the passenger seat yeah. and Tupac died in the passenger seat, so... You should why drive. not bulletproof the car? If they died in the passenger seat... <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you drive. Do it on the other side. How tough that? We're learning a lot tonight. Yeah. <laughs> what you need to get is a chauffeur's cap and a suit. You'll be fine. No one will notice. No. One will notice. <laughs> because now, Jimmy has courted controversy. Uh, uh, well, recently you were in the papers a lot over over jokes you told. And I just wondered, do you get? I mean, obviously it's not the same thing as being shot nine times, but do you get serious threats? Yeah. Oh, no, you get listening, listening to Fifty Cent's story. I mean, it, lots of echoes of my life, Graham. Yes. Yes. <laughs> No, not really. I mean, occasionally I upset people, but I, when I upset people, it's kind of joking and I, I mean to upset them. It's that I always get, I like, say stupid things on stage just to kind of get a rise out of people. And Jimmy performs 200 times a year. Yes. Has anyone ever thrown anything at you? Anyone ever thrown anything? Yeah, like, just insults. Like... <laughs> <laughs> but you do try to upset people, like in Dublin. Well, I did a thing in Dublin where I was with a friend for the day, so we're hanging out in Dublin for the day, and he dared me to say this on stage. So on stage, I went, I, went, I don't know much about Irish politics. And there was a sharp intake of breath from the audience as they went, I bet you don't. <laughs> I said, I don't know much about Irish politics. I just think we should have one island united. And the crowd were on their feet. This guy is all right. And then I added, one island united under British rule. <laughs> <laughs> they went mental. <laughs> but they, but they, it's kind of OK. I'm a plastic paddy. I was born in Ireland. I've got an Irish passport. I just speak and present myself in this way because I was raised and educated in the home counties. Goes to show what you can do when you apply yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I read, I read, I don't know if this is true, that you are quite, you're quite feisty when people come up to you with, and do your catchphrases to you with things. No, I'm not. No? <laughs> no. She said feistily. She said, <laughs> um, I'm really not, because for a start, no one really ever comes up to me with my catchphrases. Aww. I know. Oh, do she enjoy that? Do you do it? Do do it. <laughs> the only time anyone did, I was, uh, at an airport, uh, going to get a plane and you know there are times when it's just not convenient to say put down your bags and go look at my face with the birds <laughs> <laughs> and, and I said oh I'm sorry I'm really late for the plane and they just went oh we didn't think you'd be like that and I think I might have gone oh fuck off <laughs> <laughs> oh, how brilliant is that I love it you're a genius or when I was once asked to say a catchphrase and a, and a kid said, oh, will you, go on, will you do it, will you do it? Please do it, go on, will you do it, will you do it? And the thing is, I was with some people and I thought, oh, I don't know whether to be, you know, show off and do it or to be gracious and go, I don't think so because I'm not really in that situation. In the end, I went, OK, what, what would you like me to do? And he said, computer says no. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, that's not right. And the worst thing is, I said it. <laughs> Back to you, sir, because uh, you, you have diversified in your life into all these different areas, yeah. into the kind of the film, into business, thing. and is that because 
realistically, it's kind of harder to make money out of music now. Yeah, it is, but I mean, just my personal interest in the storytelling process. I've been writing songs and they're like three minutes long, so you can only create descriptions. The film projects allow me to develop cause and effect and, you know, identify with, to be able to make it visible the person's defects. Yeah. And where do you stand on this thing, you know, because people talk about how um, all TV, you know, with uh, American Idol and X Factor, I've yeah. now got a stranglehold on music that, like, it, number one every week seems to have something to do with I mean, because of the viewership. The viewership is so high. I just did the X Factor. I had to go on there with them. Surely you've done enough. I was like, no, nah, I'm going to perform on that. <laughs> do it. Did you get any what? votes? They, I'm not sure if they voted, but they saw me. <laughs> <laughs> and did you meet the X Factorians? Yeah. Oh, right. So, I, did you see them perform? I did, I did. It was Marco, y Yovana, and, and another, another group. That's Yovana, cheeky Yovana. girls. <laughs> yeah. there's, there's no, there's no oh, no, there's an X Factor in Italy. Someone just stole me in my ear. Yeah. That's yeah. why they're called Marco and Giovanni and things. Sorry, it's worth Did you see how politely, though, we handled that? Because we thought we, you had lost your mind. Yeah. <laughs> So okay. Okay. Like, oh, it's cool. Oh, Game yeah. of drinking oh, water. Oh, yeah. He's my favorite. Yeah. You shot him this look like, don't worry, he's been shot. Thanks for that. No, I like the way 50 Cent has arrived in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Europe. I did now. one here, you know, Italy. <laughs> yeah. It's a suburb of London. <laughs> Because I, I heard you on the radio, you're a big fan of X Factor. I do. I've got sucked right in. I think but, a lot, it's weird, isn't it? A lot of people have said very unkind things about Jedward. I like Jedward. But I think they should be destroyed humanely. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that! Oh. 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 Who do you think is going to win now? I think it will be Joe. Little Joe. <laughs> Do you not watch it? Could be Marco, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I think it could be Marco. <laughs> I think Ivana might nick it. Yeah. <laughs> now, listen, I, I mentioned there your business interests. Uh, 50 Cent here, is this true? Worth, maybe more now, $270 million. I'm trying to, be, you know, go up. <laughs> You're doing very well. Yeah, That's more down. money than I make in a year. <laughs> Two hundred and seven. How did you do that? I sold him water. No, seriously, it's water. He's a water millionaire. You are, aren't you? Yeah. 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 How thirsty were those people? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? You mean you put your own name on water, or you? No, I that invested in uh, vitamin water. Uh. A company that sold to Coca-Cola. It did pretty well. But you made was it a hundred million? It did pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible, isn't it? And is it true now that you're going to bring out your own range of condoms? I, I was exploring the idea. <laughs> oh, <laughs> 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 they missed that. That was the greatest moment of the show. <laughs> <laughs> she said, look, I, I was exploring the, the concept and idea of developing a, a, a new, fresher, safe sex program. You know, like Fresher the, condoms. The wrap it up <laughs> concept was, is getting a little old and I think it's unaffected, so... I've got I an idea for the condoms. Oh, yes. Ma Magic's you, you know you condom. can get condoms that are... This, I'll give you this. You can get condoms that are ribbed for her pleasure. Yeah. So what I do, turn them inside out, please myself. <laughs> That's a good tip. It's a good tip. You know, you know you can get practically invisible spray-on condoms. They've been designed specifically for gullible women. <laughs> The spray on condom? I haven't yet! With <laughs> 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 270 million, I could be persuaded. <laughs> and is it true that you're, you're, you're developing sex toys as well? Well, you know, I was exploring the idea of it, you know, because I said that I'm interested. This is adult entertainment, these are adult toys. Yeah. And, uh... Oh, adult sex toys. They absolutely... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm out. Yeah. No, so I go and they, they absolutely wanted it to be a replica. Of you. And then I said, no. <laughs> I 
a little too much. Like, I just wanted to know. Well, people couldn't afford that much latex. I just wanted to. <laughs> Where would they store that in their home? <laughs> You'd have to keep it in the shed. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't got a double garage. I'm afraid we can't buy it. <laughs> you could use it for a draft under the door when you're not. <laughs> you <would> purchase. <laughs> You know, you know, some of the old folk in, in our, your audience in our are poorly thinking, built yeah. British houses. <laughs> <laughs> we'll use it for insulation. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Now here's the thing: uh, rapping. Obviously, right. you, you found it easy, but um, but it is very difficult, isn't it? It is pretty difficult. You know, I mean, because I had good a good mentor too. I started with Jam Master J from Legendary Group Run DMC as a mentor. He actually helped me develop my song structure. So. I have some of the habits now that I had then. You know. Well, listen, we wondered how our audience would fare if they had a go. Now, I think you'd agree, they look pretty street, pretty fly, <laughs> pretty down with the kids. That's a fly audience. Oh, yeah. So, uh, I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm just using words. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, they've had a go. They, no, we, we sent them a little task during the week. So, they've had a go uh, at writing some raps. And uh, I've got some here. Now, I've got a little uh, min, mini cam thing now. So, uh, where is... Is it Hannah Bresling? Hannah Bresling? Where's Hannah? Hannah. There's Hannah. Hannah calls herself MC Spud. Spud. <laughs> or are you Scottish and that's Muck Spud? I just... No. <laughs> MC Spud. MC Spud. Oh, are you Irish? I am indeed. Oh, she's Irish. Irish. Now, here's an Irish uh, rap. E-V-E-R-Y, body, looking at me. I'm a little Irish leprechaun. What you get is what you see. <laughs> Don't have much money or a lot of time, and I've never been good with busting a rhyme. <laughs> Sent using Blackberry from our. <laughs> uh, uh, not bad. Nah, that's not bad. Now, um, where's John? Mag is it John McGrain? Oh, John McGrain. Right, yeah. Now, listen, we liked yours. We liked yours. And you're from? Are you from America? Yes, from New York. See, we've higher hopes for oh. him. <laughs> yeah. Would you like to perform yours? I'll perform okay, mine. So if we can put in a, our bingy microphone there. Oh, there we is that the okay. sparkle mic? Oh, yeah. <laughs> OK, Tom, up you come. They're loving him. They're loving him. Yeah. OK. OK, do you have an MC name? No, I don't, unfortunately. No? no. OK, well, this is it, John. <laughs> Everybody's <Yeah>. watching. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I, I can't think of it. Can you think of an MC name for him? Johnny B. Good. <laughs> Very good. All right. So, uh, do you want some beats? Oh, I'd love some. Okay. So let's have some beats. Oh, it's quite, oh, quite chilled. It's quite chilled. Okay. Chilling out at home watching BBC when my sweet lady said to me, "Yo, Ooh. there's a dude I got to see." She never said that. <laughs> So here we are now from across the pond to watch Graham Norton get it on. Graham Norton. <laughs> Graham Norton. <laughs> Peace. Oh, Graham Norton. Very good. <laughs> Love it. Now, excellent. Who's been there before? He has bored his wife by rehearsing that in a hotel room for so <laughs> many hours. Uh, this one should be good. This is uh, Martin Hennessy. Where's Martin? Glad, you seem so unlikely, but he's only oh, no, he's putting a hat on. <laughs> he's putting a hat on. Okay. Now, is this the one about your partner Sarah? Yes. It and is. is she here? <gasps> there. there she is. <laughs> oh, feast rising, beautiful Sarah. This is Sarah and Martin. It's almost like a love rap. Yeah. <laughs> Martin, you better do good. <laughs> do, you want, do, you, do you want some beats? Yes, please. Okay. This is good. This is my partner. Her name is Sarah. A lot of people think I'm her carer. This <laughs> one is... Oh! <laughs> All right, keep going. OK. Sarah, I'm so sorry. <laughs> we were crazy. We met online. Now we're together. That's just fine. Uh, she really digs me and gives me credit and loves my nickname because I'm her ferret. <laughs> She's always willing and never says no. <laughs> now I'm a geezer and she's my hoe. <laughs> well done, sir. Well done, Martin Hennessy. You, Sarah. I'm... How long have you been together? <laughs> Nine months. 
Nine months. <laughs> Not sure you'll see the year. <laughs> Uh, you spoke about your grandmother, because yeah. uh, you love your grandmother very much, so you'll be delighted to know that Nan is back! <laughs> she is! Uh, yeah, hey, she is! Hey. Big time, she's the special. <laughs> now, I don't know, I can't say, are you familiar with the Captain Tate show? I haven't got a chance to see it, I've no. been travelling so they much. They don't show it initially, do they? No. Have <laughs> <laughs> you been in it? No. Uh, uh, how do you explain... I want to be invited. Explain... It. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Hello. How do, you, how do you explain Nan to someone who hasn't seen Nan? Uh, I, I dress up as, a, as an old lady oh. and... Uh, and, um, I, and I swear. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of it, You've really. got to the crux of it yeah. there, really. Uh, but now, you've got a big Christmas special. Yeah, um, yeah. When, do you know when it's going out? It's going out Christmas night. Wow! <laughs> oh, yeah! Everybody will be home to see that. They will. Yeah. Will you make sure? I'll make sure I nah, see that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and so the basis is... It's, so it's a Christmas carol. It is. We've done a comic retelling of Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol with Nana's Scrooge. <laughs> How many, how many, that takes hours, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it does, yeah. How many hours? Oh, uh, well, it's about two hours, but, but if we're really pressed in the studio, they can slap it on in 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, listen, we've got, a, we've got a clip. Does it need setting up the clip? It's... it's just the beginning, I think. It's the beginning of the show, really. You yeah. coming into Matthew Horn playing yeah, your grandson? Yeah, Matt's okay, back doing let's it. A, let's yeah. have a look. Where are you? What are you doing? Nan, have you been sitting in the dark? No, of course I ain't. You haven't even got the telly on. Nan, are you all right? Of course I'm all right. Now, what's going on? <laughs> I'm on an economy drive. Why are you dressed like that? It's flannelette. <laughs> you want to try it? It'll be a lot warmer than that spandex you like to mince about in. <laughs> I'm surprised to see you anyway. Christmas Eve, I thought you'd be out drinking down that wine bar you like to go to. You and your friend, Stefan. <laughs> What's it called? She's called Stephanie, actually. Oh, I can't think. What's the name of it? And she's my girlfriend. Nah, I can't remember. What'd they call it? And she's from Munich. Bar Humbug. <laughs> bar Hamburg. German gay bar. <laughs> What'll I think of next? <laughs> We've got with you, there are other, there's various no, guest stars. we've got uh, the ghosts of the past. Uh, ben Miller is the ghost of Christmas past. Roger Lloyd Pack is the ghost of the future. And we went for a quite little-known actor for the present called David Tennant. Ah, uh, <laughs> you're good mate, you're good mate. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, now, cos you were brought up, cos you play by, it seems like, in a household of funny women. It was all women. Yeah, yeah, my nan was really funny, my mum was funny, my... You know, funny in the way that you don't realise everyone else isn't like that until you go out into the world and, <laughs> and you realise not everyone says sort of those sort of things. Or uh, my, my nan, you say, yeah, he's a he's a big hairy elf. He is a big hairy elf. And we and when I sort of got old enough, he say, oh nan, no elves. They're not really big, are they? And she go, yeah, they're not hairy either. <laughs> 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 and, and so a bit of my nan is in that old lady character. And my godmother always used to sit like that with her legs apart. That's how I got that, <laughs> that old lady thing. So they just didn't care, did they? You know, they didn't care. And when did you kind of discover the power of being funny and stuff? Because you, you, were you bullied? Because you went to an all-boys school, did you? Oh, I went to an all-girls school. Then I, oh, I went, oh, I did hop around oh, the education boy. system. Yes, you went to an all-boys school. And then when I was about 15, I went to an all-boys school. Were you making a film? <laughs> <laughs> Channel 4 documentary. It was an all-boys school, but they, they let about six girls come in. You know. Just to calm the lads down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they had a vote on no, it, they it... thought, this is a brilliant idea. <laughs> We're going to need a redhead. <laughs> <laughs> it was like being a pop star, though, because I walked in, and I don't think anyone had said there was going to be some teenage girls there, and I remember walking in the playground, and... It's sort of like a surge of these kids <laughs> sort of <laughs> run towards us and try to sort of... Rip your clothes off and have sex with <laughs> No, it was none of that. But I remember thinking, 
at the time, for about a week, I thought, this is fantastic. You know what I mean? Because I was about 15. This is brilliant. And then after about three weeks, I used to sort of think, I, I, I can't cope with the attention any longer. <laughs> <laughs> it was too much, you know. Because the younger ones used to come up and sort of poke me. I mean, with their finger, you know. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that's what they said when they walked away. That was school. my finger. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas special. Uh, 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 albums. And now we come to Mr. Jimmy Carr's DVD. Oh, what have uh, I done? Uh, telling jokes. Now, when I saw this, I thought this will probably just be, you know, you telling a lot of jokes on tour, a live show, and that is exactly what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was not disappointed. <laughs> I love the fact it's called telling jokes as well. Don't mess with people's minds. It'll no. be people's nanas buying it for Christmas. Let's make it simple. No, because, because the thing is, you have to turn this into a kind of a, a, an industry. Every year, you write a brand new full-length show, you tour it, you film it, you bring out the DVD. I mean, if I could think of anything else to do, if I, if I had a vitamin water opportunity, <laughs> <laughs> this is all I've got, is the jokes. No, but I love the fact that you do, you do properly, like, most comedians, when they're doing jokes, you know, what, a third of it, half of it's the same as it was last year? Yeah. All new, to the extent where... I love, I love how kind of profligate this is. Oh, yeah. and this is the, this is the program for his new tour. This is new tour, Rapier Wit. You can imagine the joke. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's a, an ad for that DVD yeah. that just has a big list of the jokes to see if you like them. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's kind of that thing of, I think people like, uh, you know, they can come to shows for different reasons. I think there's comics you go to see and there's comics you go to listen to. And I think I'm very much in the latter category. I don't think people come because they love me, they just come for the jokes. So give them the jokes. There's, this is like a book. I mean, there's material in here. Yeah, like... it's just a fun little thing. I mean, there's yeah. lots of stuff from Twitter and bits and bobs. You've yeah. got a, a, a section on reverse inventing. Do you remember any of these? Yeah, reverse inventing was... Well, it's just a thing on Twitter, because, you know, sometimes you just want to Twitter nonsense. Um, so reverse inventing, it's quite... It's just a little bit easier than proper inventing. You just reverse invent things. So I've invented, like, a sat-nav, but it comes in book form. <laughs> It's just easier. <laughs> you just can't go wrong. I've also invented contact lenses that you can't lose, and they're massive, and you wear them on little stalks. <laughs> Have a little invention for you. I've got loads of them. And you mentioned Twitter there. Uh, there's a whole section on Twitter. Do you, do you Twitter all the time? I Twitter most days, yeah. I like to, you know, if you're out and about. I mean, you know, it's a very sort of lucky life I lead. You know, I'm sort of on a show with 50 Cent and Catherine Tate. Can't believe my luck. And Hello? So Hello? <laughs> Not so much. Names in the title. Uh, <laughs> but you, you, know, you can Twitter photos and things. It's just exciting to kind of share it. And, and you also get that instant... I mean, my life, it sounds quite glamorous in a way. Oh, you do 200 shows a year. But essentially, that means you eat lunch alone in a regional town every day. So the Twitter thing is quite nice. For just because people send you messages, it's quite a fun thing. And you do some very funny jokes in it, too. There's, well, there's a little... Did you see that picture? I've done some modelling for the dolls the police use when they ask, show me where the bad man touched you. <laughs> <laughs> I can only apologise. <laughs> Did you like that woman who came up to you? The, what, that story you were telling me in... in... Well, no, it's a, it's a weird thing. Some people do come to be... Because we were chatting before the show about, you know, some people being offended. This woman came up to me after a show and went, well, that was filth. That was two hours of filth. No better than last year. <laughs> Yeah, of course, yeah. Horrified again. <laughs> do you find on, on tour, being the funny man, are you a, sort of a sex magnet? Do you... Sorry, I don't even... Why are you looking at me when you're asking that? No, clearly. <laughs> no! But they always say funny. Women always say, when they go, what's most important to a man? They always go, sense of humour. And what they mean is money. <laughs> No, not even, not even vaguely. I mean, I quite like the, Id the idea of being funny and, obviously, in a relationship, having a sense of humour or having the same sense of humour as your partner is the all-important thing to make it last. But for chatting someone up, you I've got nothing. I've got some chat-up lines, but they're different. No, I just want to hear one. What one chat-up line? Yeah. Does this rag smell of chloroform to you? <laughs> he doesn't need them. But uh, you, you are, you're beating the ladies off with, with a with a draft excluder, aren't you? <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> no, you, because you are, you know, you're really rich, you wear the bling, you're a beautiful man, you've got the body, you've got everything. They must be all over you like flies. I'd like them to be. Yeah! <laughs>
You don't try to discourage them. No, I try to have a baby by me, baby. Be a millionaire. <laughs> yeah, I try to tell them. Not, in all seriousness, though, is that not a difficult thing? Because now you are who you are and you're worth a fortune and you're an international rap star, is it not difficult to meet someone that loves you for you rather than just everything that, you know? Well, that guy on television is me. So if they like him, then they like, hey, baby. Yeah. <laughs> When you're getting intimate with the ladies, right. uh, do they want you to kind of rap and <laughs> <laughs> uh, talk through it? Uh, sorry, no, 50, I, I should say. Uh, Graham's just never been with a woman. He's, uh, he's, uh, he asks everyone this. I don't know what well, they like. From my material, the aggression translates to strongest. Oh, yeah. So they want me to take control. Like... <laughs> Wow. Did I say, to take control. To keep control. Yeah, that's what they want from me. They want the man to be the man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Take control. Yeah. They want the man to be the man. Right. Excellent. Yeah. So this goes in there. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> is this... Is this... Is this... Do you, you recognise this, Catherine? <laughs> um, I can't remember what the question was. <laughs> because so you, because you, you know, because you've touched me now, that does mean we're going out, doesn't it? <laughs> there well, is a Tonight... We are, right. Tonight we are. We look good together. We look good together. Will we... Beautiful babies. Will we Beautiful babies. We're going to be Nana nah, nah, and I'm going to be with a cougar. Oh, a cougar? Yes, you are. Cougar. cougar. Oh, of course. Can, can I just say, will it be in heat? 50 cents in Catherine Tate. On, question mark? <laughs> <laughs> I do hope so. <laughs> Uh, I've so enjoyed myself talking to all of you tonight. Uh, thank you very much. But now, uh, 50 Cent, you are going to sing for us. Yeah. So if you want to go over there, 50 Cent, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, very shortly, we'll be putting some more brave viewers into the collapsing red chair. But first, singing Baby by Me, it is 50 Cent! Come see what I mean. Come see what I mean. Come and put me on. Better have you gone. Come see what I mean. Come see what I mean. First is her neck, get in her back. Me, I'm a freak. I get in the whole act. Girl, I perform for you like a porn star. Till you had enough, then I just need a little more. Cause move, listen. New robotic sounds is going down. Now listen, I can hear your heartbeat just sweating. I can paint a perfect picture. I get deeper and deeper. I told you I'd get you. I work that, murk that, just the way you like it, baby. Turn a quickie into a whole night, baby. The sex drive and match my sex drive. Then we be moving as fast as a NASCAR ride. Twist gear, slow down. Go down, go now. You can be a lovey interfere when we intimate. I use my town, baby. Baby, be a millionaire. Have a baby by me, baby. Be a millionaire. Have a baby by me, baby. Do, do, do you think about me? Go, 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 go. Yeah. Stunting when you think about me, I'm the boss, Ben Lee, or the boss, overseas sea jet ski slide across, I love the way you dress, now take it off, put your legs out, on my shoulders of course, I'm racing through the mind, but you already lost, I'm at the finish line, and you're a friend of mine, come on, let's ride, just a little bit, every now and then, hands up, hands up, hands up, goddamn girl, we used to be friends, Just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. I'm thinking about a shit, man. She thinking I'm her hustle. She thinking about commitment. Baby, do you think about me?
right, but before we say goodnight, it is time for you, the viewers, to sit in the red chair. Tell us your most interesting anecdote. That's what they're doing. They're going to tell us the most interesting anecdote. Should they bore us, then the sleever is used. OK, so who's up first? You can do it if you want. Do you want to do it? OK, so who's up first? Who's up first? Oh, hello. <laughs> Yet. Uh, what's your name? Carol. Carol. Off you go. We were invited, my son and myself, to meet the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh. Whoa! <laughs> Very good opening, Carol. We weren't expecting it. Okay, go. And my son was blind, and the Queen asked him how much sight he had left, and the Duke of Edinburgh said, Not a lot, judging by the tie he was wearing. The poor <laughs> Queen Can I just say, you are the first person in the series, I, I, do, unless you want me to collapse the chair. No, uh, please, can I do a runner? You, do a runner, because that was a fantastic story. Well done, Carol! <laughs> the first person in the series did not forget that was such a good story. Do you think it's true? <laughs> good old Prince Philip. God love him. <laughs> just think of him. Every, every time he looks at a £20 note, he thinks, I've had that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who's up next? Who's up next? Oh, hello. Hello. Now, you have signed the form, haven't you? I certainly have. <laughs> Sorry, I think she signed a do not resuscitate form. <laughs> 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 it's all right. Oh, lovely. What's your name? Uh, Sandra. Sandra? Yes. All right, Sandra. OK, off okay. you go. Right, this is my experience in the yew forest with a man in a kilt. <laughs> for a walk with my friend Tanita and a, a huge man came along. He was dressed in a kilt and he was carrying a very large stick. <laughs> I think mean, that's what did, I thought. Did it look like a drafted scooter? It's a... <laughs> and the uh, greetings were exchanged and he went on his way. <laughs> um, into the yew forest we went. Deep in the forest... <laughs> Forest. was behind me, and suddenly, from behind a tree, out this man in the kilt walked. <laughs> he turned round and he had his kilt up. <laughs> I'm quite short-sighted, so it was lost. <laughs> but he wouldn't leave. And I was going nowhere. I was terrified. Is there an end to this story yes, at all? Yes, now. <laughs> story of a festival of football next year on BBC One as we follow South Africa's 2010 World Cup journey. And it's journey's end for the final two candidates in The Apprentice USA at 5 to midnight.